Human activities like deforestation and the burning of fossil fuels, like coal, oil, and gas, are changing our climate in ways that pose increasing threats to human well-being in both developing and industrialized nations. The good news is that we can still avoid the most severe impacts of global warming by reducing our emissions of heat-trapping gases and halting and reversing deforestation. In these tours that follow, some of the world's leading scientists and practitioners will guide you through the risks of climate change and identify the opportunities for managing it. As temperatures rise, snow and ice across the globe are disappearing. As a result, less radiation is being reflected back to space and more heat is being absorbed, leading to further heating of the Earth's surface. This is a positive feedback. Data of projected population growth into the future, like the data shown here, is used to gauge where humans may be emitting different types of heat-trapping gases as a result of activities from burning fossil fuels. Unfortunately, over the last decade, average emissions have been higher than the highest IPCC emissions projection. The Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet. The oceans have absorbed about a third of the carbon dioxide we have produced so far, reducing the effects of climate change. But there's a cost. The Arctic ecosystem, already stressed by warming and acidification, cannot withstand irresponsible industrial development. The forests of the Montagne des Français are being cut for charcoal, a threat to habitats across the island. Forest carbon income through RED would replace the need for harvesting charcoal with sustainable financing for keeping this forest intact. Payments for forest protection through carbon markets and RED initiatives provide economic incentives for maintaining the forest rather than cutting them down for unsustainable timber harvests, human settlements, or conversion to agriculture. Europe's appetite for cheap protein, and in particular for low-cost chicken feed to supply supermarkets and fast food restaurants, was driving a massive expansion of agricultural lands deep into the Amazon forest. Greenpeace began to document how vast tracts of the Amazon were being burned and bulldozed, quite literally for chicken feed. In California, we are already seeing the signs of a change in climate. Average temperatures in our state rose nearly two degrees during the second half of the 20th century. And if greenhouse gas emissions are not substantially reduced, scientists tell us that temperatures in California could rise an additional seven degrees during this century. That's why in California we have taken action. In 2006, I signed Assembly Bill 32 to create the world's most comprehensive emission reduction program. That law commits California to reducing greenhouse gas emissions to the 1990 level by the year 2020. We are also developing aggressive strategies to get more of our energy from renewable sources such as wind and solar. And we are building the hydrogen highway. And we are investing in a high-speed rail system from San Diego all the way to Sacramento. And when complete, this rail system will save up to 12 billion pounds of greenhouse gases per year. But even though we are taking off this great action, we must also be prepared for some continued climate change, which is now inevitable. The climate crisis is one of the most serious challenges facing the world today. The challenge is huge and time is short, but together we can solve it.